Since the birth of civilization, humanity has reveled in watching undersized opponents fight to the death. Whether it's cockfighting or third grade knife fights, it seems we just can't get enough of compact combatants clashing for our amusement. However, as those noble sports are sadly illegal in 50 and 49 states respectively, today we must make do with pitting modern miniature muscle versus deceptively elderly and frail looking. The GTX 1650 Super is widely known as the car the 1650 should have been. Offering similar performance to the previous generation GTX 1060, though with a 4GB frame buffer holding back its aspirations in the 2020s. With its modern architecture, low power draw, and better availability, it's surely the favorite to win. Its opponent, hunched up in the corner, lulling the younger, fitter opponent into a false sense of superiority, is the R9 Nano. The far older card packs a punch on paper, but has fallen out of favor with AMD's driver developers lately. That isn't the card's only handicap, but it's the one that's gonna count most in this duel to the death. With six months separating the two Fortnite benchmark runs, a direct comparison isn't at all fair, but hey, neither is forcing eight-year-olds to stab each other, that's just life. At competitive settings, there's virtually nothing between the two cards, but the younger card takes the W with a 2.5% advantage. Warzone favors the 1650 Super again, this time by a wider margin. The 1650 Super scores 95 FPS at medium settings, whereas the old Nano can only manage to hit 88 FPS by dropping the low. Better luck next time, Grandpa! Both GPUs managed to break the 60fps barrier in Horizon Zero Dawn, and the margin between the two was small enough to call a tie. But we're not here to make friends, we're here to call a winner. And that winner is the 1650 Super. Oh now, this is just cruel. Don't laugh at the old timer folks, it's humiliating enough that it lost by an enormous 25% margin in Forza Horizon 4. Heh, <laughs> guess the R9 needs to step on the gas, huh? Yeah. I gotta admit, that's not a bad result. Cyberpunk's a goddamn demanding son of a bitch on modern cards, and the Nano proved it still got balls by beating the 1650 Super by 0.1 FPS. Not bad at all, old timer. Too bad, old timer. Assassin's Creed proved just too tough on the aging Silicon, losing by just under 5% to the newer model's 43 FPS. No, that's not strictly detectable by all but the most sensitive of souls, but I just don't care. Once more, the R9 Nano's lifeless husk is dragged through the streets behind the wagon of the Victoria 1650 Super with its pathetic 107 FPS, losing to the younger car's magnificent 110 FPS. <coughs> Normal voice time, and in truth, with a couple of notable exceptions, the R9 Nano holds up remarkably well, considering. Either card could conceivably fit into a mini ITX build, and although the older card sucks down 75 watts more power than the 1650 Super, it can apparently undervolt quite nicely. No, I don't think performance is going to be the determining factor here. Comparing scalper pandemic prices to those of the before times isn't apples to apples. Last time I picked up an R9 Nano, it cost me £160, which is slightly more than the 1650 Super cost me a year earlier. Today, while neither card appears on the used market very often, you're more likely to find a 1650 Super than a working R9 Nano. Prices at the time of writing are within about 15% of each other, and given the better overall performance, longer lifespan, and better availability, as well as still being available to buy new, if you just have too much damn money, the winner of this duel is the GTX 1650 Super. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.